The Magic Lantern, Chapter 10 The Man in the Pale Coloured Overcoat The walk to the tram stop was gruelling. The wind had become a gale, driving the thickening snow into their faces. They stopped to buy hot pies with the half-crown detected trench had given them before jumping on a tram to the tron gate with the leftover change. When they got back to the room in the basement zoo, a fire was blazing in the little stove. It gave the windowless room a cheery glow and made their frozen cheeks tingle with warmth. They sat in front of the stove to thaw out and told George about their conversation with Detective Trench. Well, that was a waste of time, said Jimmy flatly. We didn't exactly learn much about Tam's murderer or A.B. I wouldn't say it was a waste of time. We got half a crown and a pie out of it, said Charlie. And I wouldn't say we didn't learn anything, said Sandy. We learnt that there are two suspects, not just the man in the pale-coloured overcoat the newspapers described, and I don't believe he's never heard of A.B. Did you see the expression on his face when Sam mentioned him? Sam grinned and nodded. As the warmth of the cosy stove thawed their frozen bones, they all began to drift into a doze which was abruptly broken when Harry's voice just outside the door shouted, Oi! You! That's staff only in there! I am a police detective, sir, they heard a man's deep voice answer in a strange accent. Jimmy jumped up from the chair he was sharing with Sam and George and he throwing them to the floor. Shh! he hissed at them. Help me put the lamps out. Why? Charlie whispered back. It's another detective. Maybe he's come from the garden office. Detective Trench said he would send one round. Jimmy's right. That doesn't sound like a Glasgow Bobby, said George. He sounds foreign. Sandy and the boys quickly extinguished the lamps and squeezed together under one corner of the workbench where they were hidden by one large, worn-out chair. They stayed glued to the spot, holding their breath and straining to hear the conversation beyond the door. From this side of the room, they could only hear voices, not words, as the talkers seemed to have moved away from the door. What do you think they're talking about? Charlie asked. Shh, I'm trying to listen, Jimmy whispered back. The voices became more muffled and indistinct as they moved further away and merged with the general cacophony of the zoo outside. Sandy began to feel stiff from crouching and being squashed together with the boys, so started to crawl out of their hiding place. No, George hissed, grabbing her by the ankle as she crawled out. He might be waiting for Harry to go and then come back. Sandy retreated to the shadows of the workbench and they waited, squatting in the gloom. The minutes passed and then, just as the gang thought it must be safe to leave their cramped corner, they heard the door creak slowly open. A man entered and peered into the darkness. The boys and Sandy froze, not even daring to breathe. The fraudulent detective in a pale-coloured overcoat struck a match and, using its brief bright flame, scanned the small room. The gang was so deeply hidden, crammed together in the shadows behind the chair, that the small match flame couldn't find them. But he knew they were there. He could sense their eyes watching him and smell the recently extinguished lamp and candle wicks. The match flame licked at his fingers. He shook it out, lit another and searched the workbench. There was nothing, just bits of junk, but he did catch a glimpse of a shoe which gave away their hiding place. He made no move to catch them. They would panic and scream, bringing that nosy zookeeper running, and he didn't want that. He went back to the door, glanced one more time behind him, blew the match out and left. Who do you think that was? Sandy whispered. It was the man in the pale coloured overcoat, said Andrew. What? The man Nelly saw in the hallway? asked Sam. Well, he fits a description in the papers, said Andrew. But what has the foreign man got to do with all of this? asked George, who really was puzzled. 
why do you think why do you think he's come here asked sandy i don't know replied george looking more than concerned but whatever it is i don't think it's good do, do you think we should go to the police charlie asked perhaps replied george but maybe we should go and see that detective again but it's too late to do anything tonight well if you want to know what happens next you'll have to tune in again on the first thursday of september for chapter 11 see you then take care and stay well Thank you.